Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Half Gen Podcast. We've got a full house today. I uh, want to welcome everybody back. It, it kind of feels like Ross is here. Ladies and gentlemen, Ross is here. <laughs> Woo! Woo! Clap it up for Ross. Uh, clap it up. You. I only didn't clap. I heard, a, I heard someone in the hand. background go, Woo! <laughs> <laughs> it was perfect timing. We got Nat. Clap it up for Nat. Everybody clap it up for Nat. He's back. Clothes are not necessary. Appreciated, but not mandated. We we heard. We heard the cries. We brought a Tony. We've got a Tony. Clap it up for Tony. Yeah, hey, one of the two Tonys. Yeah. Hey. We, we can never have both Tonys on. Nope. That will Chris be disastrous. Chris said the other Tony doesn't exist, to be honest. So well, I haven't seen him in a long time. And then And then Chris is here. That's me. I just realized what you did. I was looking to figure out how you solved this dilemma of of, of Tony's. Uh, I really want to say Cypher just now. Uh, Tony's uh, webcam not showing him, and you just, just put you over Tony. I just put me over it. <laughs> <laughs> That's fucked up. Yeah, well, nobody clapped for me, so. <laughs> wow. I'm not even there. I don't want your pity clap. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right, we got a lot of games to talk about today. For the first time in a long time, we played a lot of shit. Very few, little of it was probably modern. Who wants to go first? I mean, I can go first. Nat, take it away. So I've been playing something. You guys know it. You could see by me and Ross's jersey, I've been playing a lot of 2K. Because I literally made Jesus incarnated. <laughs> and I <laughs> uh, Ross knows I don't care about any mid range game. I don't care about yep. anything. Throw me the ball at the corner and let me shoot it three. It's it's literally everything <laughs> wrong with the NBA today is NAS play style. Yep. 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 Shoot the three. Shoot the three. <laughs> I can miss two thirds of my shots. It doesn't matter because three points bails you out of any situation. <laughs> uh, most situations. <laughs> Most situations. I figured the team I need to play you with, actually. Oh, yeah? And it's it's not like... It's Is it like the Golden 2016 State. Golden State? Okay. No, it's not Golden State. I know you would think that, but it's not 2016 Golden State. I, I would play you with two teams. Two teams, actually. I would play you with either the Pacers or the Blazers, and I'm pretty sure I could beat you with either of those teams. Yeah, I think so. Because what, if I what? start off strong, you can't beat me. I could. You could literally pull up with Dame from the half court, so you have to play full course defense at all times. Yeah. Are literally going to be in three Z faces. Oh, I'm, he's, I, he's a confident I, man. I'm so down for this. No, I'm, he beat me 3.0, like 3.0, like or four oh. How many times we played? I don't know. Uh, uh, I don't know. It we sounds like the three. gauntlet's being well, thrown Ross down right now. Me because I was like, I was like, I'm not good, and he just came out, you know, and kick, took my ball and kicked it on the roof. He's like, oh, fuck you. Like, like I was lying to him. I was like, I'm not lying. I told you, I'm not good at this game. <laughs> I literally made Jesus incarnated so I can enjoy this game. It, it really, it was just the first game that was like the blowout. That was like 90 to 54 or something. But then the other game. See, I didn't realize, I didn't realize I could use Frank like that, man. Frank is nice. <laughs> bro, I'm telling you, bro. That was fun though. I'm, and they I'm wouldn't totally... let me turn on simulated defense. You, you gotta, you gotta right, D up, man. Yeah, right, Chris? It's... Simulated defense is the way to go. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Gotta D up. Nobody wants to do all that work. The tracking is bad, man. I can't figure it out. It sounds like this is going to be good practice for the uh, half gen tour when uh, Mario Golf comes out. That's, that's, yeah, so I'm all those three shot, three, three point yeah, shots true. he's able to make is definitely going to. I'm talking about take. the smack talk. I'm good. I'm good at golf games. You're going to be surprised at the fucking sneaky hole in ones I hit. I'm gonna need to. We got to use all our right. own characters. So all we, the courses. Yeah, we need to make our we own. We have character. to make our own. But I don't know how well that's gonna go. Play the of shit course. out of that. We're gonna make Jesus characters. Everyone's gonna be <laughs> Jesus gonna playing be golf. Jesus, I'll be the devil. I'm not gonna be Jesus now. You gotta be Thick Daddy Satan. That's what you have. To <laughs> thick do. Daddy Satan. Count me in. <laughs> the, 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 Write the that down TDS. for the title. We got an early contender. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, that's a that's a joke to my Daddy other podcast. Satan. You were talking about the little Nas X video, and I said I, I was telling my co-host, uh, who's a bigger guy, that I was like I was making fun of him, saying, "Oh, he's gonna if he keeps talking the way he was, he's gonna be Satan in that little Nas X video, and he's gonna snap his neck." And I was like, "So his AKA has to be Thick Daddy Satan now." And he doesn't like it. But I'm like, "Nah, your nickname is Thick Daddy Satan." Uh, 
Now, hold on. Is that thick with a K or with two C's? Two C's, of course. Okay, I'm just making two K's. Oh. <laughs> no, not two K's. Uh, yeah, that was fun playing that, though, Nat. I'm, I do want to play you again because now you have thrown down the challenge. So now. Oh, no, I'm never playing you. If I beat you once, I'm never playing you again. I'm I want to I want to commentate. God, you're just like Chris. So yeah. annoying. People, people won't play games with me, man. Uh, and stop joking. being good. At, see, no, Ross, here's my bro. The, here's the thing, Ross, is you're yeah, very yeah, yeah. good at sports games, okay? And sure. I know I'm going to lose to you, but I will still try. The difference is you won't come to my house where I, in the games that I'm good at. Ross will not throw down with me in StarCraft. <laughs> Where I can feel the power. <laughs> no, so here's the thing. If I if I played, if I took the time to learn how to play controlling multiple characters, which I don't, and I need to change my camera view because the 2K camera for for multiple character playing is not it for me. I need what, like what the, camera do you play on? The Wait. 2K camera. The one that like follows like the player you're playing as. Oh, I, I like the, 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 the like the player lock camera from the my player. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. I play. Yeah. I was playing on that, but for playing controlling the whole team, that's not ideal. I, I would rather, you know, a view where I could see all the players and shit easier. Yeah. So I just play um, on the normal two K camera. That's just it doesn't track one player. It just stays behind, and just mm-hmm. like goes down the court with you. No, it stays like that too. I would rather play like the TV camera, kind like the of broadcast thing. camera. Yeah. yeah, I like that camera for yeah. playing multiple characters. So I, I don't like that as much because it's way easier to see passing lanes in the 2K camera, mm-hmm. just from my own depth perception. But, but yeah, I, the gauntlet's been thrown. I'm gonna play. I, I mm-hmm. want you guys the to like, stream it on down. Stream it on that, Discord. Man. Me and me and Tony will commentate. Make your uh, make it'll your be great. Player Turn off the commentary. We'll do and it. Jesus will bless you. Jesus will bless you. He will show you the way. <laughs> nah, Salvation. Nah, man. Nah. Real life. Real life basketball. I don't have time for my player, man. That takes too much time. Ross doesn't have nah, time man. for Jesus. Nah. I never <laughs> have, no never time will. For Jesus. No. Uh, but yeah, I played that. I played some Binding of Isaac. The new DLC for that came out. And how, how I was, was having the best run I, I ever had in the game until we just started. Not ever had in the game, but since the DLC, it's mm-hmm. good. Uh, they changed the movement speed and stuff on a lot of enemies, so it kind of fucks me up. I think I have more time in certain places. Certain enemies are faster. Certain enemies are slower. It's just it's gonna take me a little bit more time to you know reacclimate. I haven't watched enough Northern Lion videos or some Victor <laughs> videos to you know know the meta yet. Right, right. I've been watching some some Northern Lion stuff. It looks it it just look visually looks good too. Yeah. A lot of the animations got upgraded. So, you know, it's cool. And I think that's it. All is all I've been playing. Have I been playing anything else? No, I think that's it. I said 2K and Binding of Isaac. The weirdest yeah. combo. Yeah. No, it's whenever you wanna whenever you wanna play 2K, let me know. Nah, see now you're too confident now. Yeah, you didn't actually know, welcome me. <laughs> no, you didn't actually <laughs> welcome me in this. Like you didn't you make me cast. feel welcome. <laughs> so, no, you know. man. I'm not confident. I'm just intrigued by your confidence with these teams. I was confident <laughs> when I told you I didn't know how to play. <laughs> and now me. it's time to learn to play this Saturday. Whatever <laughs> come off is not confident. I don't care if I lose. It's just no. I just like your confidence. I don't want. You, I just don't want you to be. I just don't want you to be sadistic about it. Like yeah, be I'm confident. Not gonna, I'm not going to be sadistic about it. That's not me. You know me. This is the guy who went and immediately put on a Paul Pierce jersey as he seen me in my Knicks jersey. <laughs> We're up like, 16 yeah. right now. Yeah, I'm going to show him. I'm going to show him. I'm going to show him. I'm going to put the jersey of the guy who shit himself on. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I'm going to do. He came back and won those finals. <laughs> oh. I didn't expect it to get so heated in the first in the first conversation. <laughs> it's perfect. It's perfect. Now, see, now all I want to do is, yeah, now all I want to do is play 2K. And I just want to play against the Blazers and the Pacers now. Ross hasn't wanted to play games more than he has today in like yeah. maybe like a year. And I'm so mad. I'm so mad that that's, this is the day that my <laughs> mind decided, hey, you want to play games today, but guess what? Podcast. Listen, why? We, we, <laughs> why this day? 
Because tomorrow remember, I'm not going to want to play anything. Remember the sacrifices he made, dude. But if you if you have another slow day at work, you hit me up because I can park attack all goddamn day. Yeah, it's I'm a hundred percent down. Go. I might, I might do that. It's a good game, man. I keep telling you, dude. I keep telling. Nat got mad. So Nat, I was streaming it, and we're streaming <laughs> this podcast live on Twitch.tv slash Nightmare TV. Um, I've been asking Nat for weeks. I have even on the podcast. I think I've been saying, "Yo, we need to play Park Attack." Nat's like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah, no, yeah, we'll definitely do it." No, and then I'm playing today to play with Park Ross. Attack. I'm playing today with Ross, and he just comes in and be like, "I've been betrayed." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was betrayed. I was like, "No, Damn, you were this not. You had thing. every opportunity to play." I didn't even see you show Ross the fruits of our labor. He the it magic weeks of- ago, he told you. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> yeah um, okay every time i no, ask him the to play, reason, he's like the only nah, reason nah, the, right no now. the only reason i i never say i want to play is because when chris asks me it's literally 10 p.m on like a sunday and i'm like if i start playing this i'm going to be playing this for five hours all right that's the on. problem hold on let's be fair when has not ever asked me to play park attack Well, I'd be sitting here like there's days where I'm here and there's days where I'm not. I'm just saying. I've been here. You have. (laughs) When I'm here, I'm here. You know what I mean? And when I'm not, I'm not. I don't know what you want me to say. And then there's days like I my my video game schedule can be moved around. Yours is very strict. It's like this is destiny time this is this game time no it dude can't be as moved around as mine you know i, what was I, mean? supposed, I come I here was... with a blank slate and lately i've been defaulting to 2k because you know i was like oh let me play as jesus yo i i have always stopped playing like whenever zane hits me up for like killing floor 2 i will almost always put down what i'm playing to go play with him if you hit me up even if i'm in the middle of destiny like if i'm if i'm in the middle of a raid i'm gonna tell you yo as soon as this raid is done i'm gonna come play park architect you know what's funny the day you were streaming that and i was in the chat i was actually gonna come hit you up to play park architect and i see you play killing floor so i said let me not bother (laughs) That's why I was in the chat for so long. That would be one of the few scenarios where I would say no, because I'm already playing with like someone else, you know? No, I know. And I realized that. And I was like, I don't want to be a dick in this situation, but I fully intended to come and ask if you wanted to play Park You would. And then you was busy. And I was like, okay. (laughs) The one time. And then I went went and beat Jesus in fucking 2K for like another couple games. I'm like, I'm, I think my team is 38 and two. The two games we lost is when I was on the bench because, you know, at the beginning of my career, they put you on the bench. So, yeah, yeah. mistakes were made. Yeah. Jesus Side doesn't bar. ride the bench. That game, takes that, the game, wheel. that game in my player feels really good when the crowd is chanting MVP, especially in the garden. Like their their sounds for arena sounds are really fucking good. Yeah. We were yeah, joking. It would be we... great hearing Jesus erupt throughout the entire court. <laughs> We were we were joking the other day because he was playing and I kept making up like things like on you know like you know if he had like three days off in three days he will rise. You know? <laughs> and I said on every third day I got to drop a seventy pointer. And then we said Jesus, the, <laughs> Jesus doesn't play on Sundays. Time. So that is the Lord's day. <laughs> he can't play games on a Sunday. <laughs> but yeah, we were just making all the jokes like Jesus walks and scores. <laughs> Jesus cannot travel. He walks on water. <laughs> it all it's just dumb up. shit, you know, and just just rolling with it as hard as we can. Like what would look great on a T-shirt, you know? <laughs> oh, Nat, you've been playing anything else or that's it? That's it. 2K right. and Binding of Isaac, the weirdest combo ever. Yeah. I feel like I played something else since the last time we podcast, but I feel like I can't remember I don't know. Oh, I played some Going Under. That's what I also played. That's it. We didn't play Divinity this week, so I can't say that. Yeah, no, unfortunately. Oh, oh I started playing Baldur's schedule. Gate 3 a little bit to just figure out what what character I want to build and stuff in that. We need to do that. Yeah. We can take your time playing We that. need to find a fourth. I thought Uranium was going to be a fourth. It, well, Did we never talked We never talked to him. Like, we, we no. said he had it, but then we never actually discussed it with him. So he doesn't we count We just discussed yet. about him. Yeah. yeah. That's usually and, how and conversations he, with him go. We talk and, and about we, him. 
and when you play, it's going to be just the three of you, and then he's going to be wandering off somewhere else. Just on... the three of us. And sometimes I still... DC Universe Online. He's, find it he's going to be doing so, the, the previous no, quest. Don't bring up DC Universe Online, because I still want to beat it, and no one I, will play it with me. I have had the itch to play that again recently. Since I when? shit you not. I talked about it on my stream the other day. I said I should I reinstall D. Tony was there. <laughs> he heard me. Tony, did I not, like a week ago, say I want to play DC Universe again? Yeah, I think I, I think I mentioned like they were doing an update, and you're like, oh yeah. And I said, yeah, yeah I want to play a new again. Episode, yeah, yeah. I'm so. It was just we're so close to finishing the main campaign. Like, once I get that, I can have closure. Where are we? That we're close? like, we're like almost max level. If what I remember correctly. Well, I'm gonna make I, a new. If I play again, I'm, I want to make another. Like, uh, you don't have to, but I want to make another character because I know what I want. Yeah, should we start over? Because I don't remember. You anything. don't have to, and that's the other thing is I don't fucking remember anything. I don't remember anything. Yeah, anything. No. Anything. Yeah, no, I'm I'm bringing over Hell of Dope Shaka Bra. Oh, that's, fair. Then... that's fair. <laughs> oh, that's yeah. right. Yeah. I got were we Dope villains or okay. were we heroes? Or were we dancers? <laughs> wow. That is the question. That was on that was we were playing that on PlayStation, right? No, we, no. most recently we played it on PC because the trophies carry over. I think you were on PlayStation because it has crossplay. Yeah. I'm going to remote play my PS5 right now to install it. Yeah, there you go. I'll install it on Steam. All right. Um, so while you do that, I guess I'll start talking about games. Tony, let's talk about uh, It Takes Two. Yes, let's talk about that crazy, wild roller coaster. Of that game is a front, like, you know, in a, it's not a crazy year so far for games, but that is a very early contender for, like, that is very clearly the best game that's probably come out well. Maybe not, because Hitman came out this year. That is a that is a game that is in the consideration for game of the year already. Like it's pretty good. It is good. Like we the last like it looks great, it plays surprisingly well, and then like it it just like every time like I think they're about to like have a mechanic overstay its welcome, they just add something to it or they like make you explore it in a different way that like ends up being so cool. Like that game just keeps like throwing stuff at you, but like it, it, it's never too much and it never stays around long enough to get dull, which I think is not like a way out was a really good game, but I felt like a way out started to drag the longer you played it. I think it takes two is going to be a longer game, but I think it's just paced better. And like e even like the stuff like the kind of humor and the dialogue that you know at first seemed a little weird. Like I'm starting like the book. I'm starting to really like the book because he's real dumb and I like that. And I don't know why, but I do. Fuck that book, Doctor Hakeem. He made us do it. Sidebar. <laughs> Sidebar. Uh, a way out. I feel like for me, uh, the most annoying part was the gunplay. Once the gunplay started happening, I was like, ah. Well, that's the part where the game yeah. starts to overstay its welcome a bit. Yeah, it's like I wasn't. Like, I liked A Way Out, but I didn't like it a ton. Like, I still, Brothers, to me, is still the best game that he's put out. I think It far. Takes Two will definitely challenge that for you. Nice. Like, this nice. is this is a phenomenal game. Uh, like, and it's tough. I can't talk too much without, like, you know, kind of spoiling stuff. Uh, all I'll mm. say is there was, there was this scene where Tony and I, um, we had to destroy something. And I was very uncomfortable about having to do it. I was very uncomfortable because like, it's just wow. this little innocent thing and it's just being very innocent. And like, it's just like, no, we have to destroy it. And I'm just like, dude, we don't, we don't have to do that. And then Tony's like, we got to do it. We got to do it. It's like, <laughs> it must be done. it's like when you throw the baby in the fire in the Witcher, I get it. And then like halfway, even he's like, yeah, oh, like that. even halfway, <laughs> Tony's like, I don't like this anymore either, but we got to get it done. He's like, the sooner it's done, the sooner it's over. <laughs> like, we're just sitting there. I was like, I don't want to do this. <laughs> oh, God. It's that book. The book it hurt me, book. man. The book made me do it. It hurt me. Um, but real quick, uh, before I talk about more stuff, somebody cover for me. I got to step away for a second. Okay. So, mm -hmm. Ross, I don't know if you have stuff to talk about. Or, Tony, if you have more to talk about. So, how's your guys' day been? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know, work. And, uh, so, yeah. Hey, yeah, work sucks. sucks. 
Yeah, yeah we just need to plan plan a way to like scheme the lottery. Mm-hmm. Right. Yo, if I win the lottery, guys, I'm just coming to everybody's house, and I'm gonna hand deliver y'all a grilled cheese sandwich. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that'd that's be great. Gonna yeah. I'm gonna hold you to that. <laughs> <laughs> if I don't see it, I'm gonna come. come with, I'm gonna come with all the the great ingredients and like a hot plate, and I'm gonna open up my van, and I'm gonna make a grilled cheese for you. You, you got. It's I, I don't know if that'll work, man. I, I feel like anytime you try to get within like 50 miles of me, something bad happens. There's only we're... once. Only once. <laughs> it's only once, and that's the last and time I you ever I, came around. I only made it halfway across. I didn't make it completely there. So mm-hmm. you know. Yeah, well, I'll hold you to that. Derek Rose just hit a buzzer beater to finish the first quarter. Derek Rose is nice, man. Dude, is he one of is he one of the is he the biggest what if in NBA history? If he would never have had like injury Derek problems? Rose, legitimately, if never got injured, yeah. in my opinion, could have been the best player all time. Yeah, he was too fucking good. And you hear other you could hear other NBA players talk about how fucking good he is and what if too. It's it's like kind of crazy. Yeah, I think about those what ifs a lot. Derek Rose because Derrick Rose oh, yeah. was Allen Iverson with the work ethic. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. And way more athletic. Yeah, and way more athletic. Like, not even yeah. close. Yeah. Man. I know Chris hates this because as soon as he left, we just that yeah. the, the sports <laughs> talk. In the sports <laughs> portion of the podcast. Yep. Yep. And Taj Gibson with the ball in the post. Turnaround jumper. Yeah, no know. good. The New York Bulls, you know, just balling out right now. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, I forgot. Yeah, Tosh Gibson, that's true. That's true. No, man, I, there's I no shame Romeo, in my game. Ro- Romeo Langford back these past few games for the first time in his NBA career. He's okay. On oh, your guy's team? I was like, I don't even know who the yeah. fuck that is. I didn't even know who he was yeah, on yeah. the Celtics. He, yeah, he was like the, our like 14th pick. He was the 14th pick in 2019, but he's been out with injuries nonstop. Yeah. But he just came back finally after wrist surgery. We, we have our full team. Actually, Tristan Thompson's back. He's mm-hmm. not injured for the first time in forever, too. Well, Sounds like a lot of people are slipping. Yeah. Got Rob Williams, though, showing up. Getting those starting minutes after Tristan Daniel Tyson. Tristan Thompson got. looks like a black Ken doll. And not in a good way. <laughs> like, he looks like a waxed figure. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you get for dating a Kardashian. <laughs> like he looks also, waxed. <laughs> it's kind of weird. Yeah, Trist- Tristan Thompson looks like a black end doll is on our list of potential titles for this episode. <laughs> oh, man. oh yeah. He's, he's been disappointing, to be honest, since he since he got here. I'm surprised you guys haven't traded and Danny Ainge is usually norm normally good about shipping players off before they overstay their welcome. I feel like the past couple of years he's only made decisions to kind of hurt you guys though. Yeah. Well, you got rid of Jeff Teague. That was definitely one that was hurting us. Yeah. He was he was really I mean, good. like you guys definitely should I I know you wasn't excited about it last year, but seeing how he's playing, you guys should have definitely held on to Gordon Hayward. Yeah. Yeah. But <laughs> it's just like that that should have happened. Uh, yeah, but like at the same time, like having Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown, like he wouldn't have that production that he's having in Charlotte either. I feel you. Even if that's not nice. that, you guys should have held on to uh, what's his name, who also went to Charlotte, uh, Terry, Terry Rozier. Rozier. Yeah, that was part of yeah, that was part of the Kemba trade. Yeah, and like yeah. Well, yeah, you guys traded for him. God damn that that was yeah. dumb. He was out of his contract. <laughs> hey man. <laughs> he just couldn't say anything more. He was like, oh, you know. Let me look at that deal again. Terra Zero trade to Hornets. What, what was that deal? That was a very Knicks like trade. It was a sign trade. Terra Zero in a 2020 second round draft pick in exchange for Kemba Walker and a 2020 second round draft pick. Who <laughs> was a free agent? <laughs> I mean, I guess they did it for Kemba to you know show good faith because he gets more money from being si- resigned yeah. by. Charlotte. I think it was mostly that, yeah. But so I I get why they did it, 
because it know. makes you to do it all the time and then try and convince us it's a great idea. Let me tell you, it's <laughs> never a good idea. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but yeah, we're just we're missing something, and I don't know what it is because we have, I think we have the talent, but we should be far better than what our record is. I mean, you guys have two, in my opinion, transcendent players. And yeah. Kemba is a great player any other day of the week. So, you know what I mean? So, yeah, you guys should be to... good. But it's just about figuring out. To be honest, you if this keeps trending this way, you guys might have to move one of them. Yeah. No. And I've figure out another that. piece. Like, like, I don't know. You like Jalen over Tatum? I think that's a mistake. Uh, no, I, I, would, I would keep Tatum. I'd like me personally, I like okay. Jalen. Because I would but say, like, like like Jalen's having know. a better season this year, but uh, Tatum has the higher ceiling. Yeah, I think obviously. Tatum is the higher ceiling player, and yeah. I feel like it, this sounds weird, but if you guys like a good trade for y'all would definitely be trading Jalen to the 76ers for uh, why am I drawing a blank right now? Ben Simmons for Ben Simmons, that would be a great fit for y'all team because Ben Simmons is great off the ball, and you could let yeah. Tatum run the ball, and Simmons could be good. Like I just feel like that would be good for both teams. Yeah, what would be – like, we need – But that would be scary facing <laughs> Jalen and yeah. Embiid. <laughs> I feel like yeah. I feel like while that would be good for your team, I also feel like uh, the 76ers kind of do win that trade, like just for production-wise. Mm-hmm. Yeah, if Embiid stays healthy, he's unbelievable. Mm-hmm. It's it, it's crazy, like, because he went to went to University of Kansas where I was – I'm a huge fan of, of mm-hmm. the, the college basketball team. And watching Embiid from there – looking like a stick figure to in the NBA where he just like filled out so much. Like ya- watching Giannis is even crazier than that. Yeah. Like. yeah. No, true, 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 true. Cause Giannis's head used to be way too big for his body. Yeah, it's true. It's very true. <laughs> yeah. It's, I don't know. I don't know what the Celtics are going to do. Like, I think like I like Kemba a lot, but like, I feel like having more of a facilitator, at the point guard would help us a lot. More. I think that would help your team a lot is having yeah. more, a facilitator just that yeah. fits like your guys' style of play. Uh, yeah. Brad Stevens like, is getting I w- fired, also. I don't know if you know that. <laughs> He's getting fired. It's, yeah. it, it's <laughs> he like, is gone. Like around around the trade deadline, I was thinking there were rumors about like us trying to get Lonzo. I was like, Lonzo will be a good fit. Lonzo, I'm not going to hold y'all. I, I really feel like Lonzo is going to the Knicks. I know every, every that's the about every <laughs> player, but. Yo, you got quickly though. We do have, and you quickly. got Frank. <laughs> um, you got, you got Frank, man. Um, so here's the thing, right? Uh, with Lonzo specifically, uh, I feel like Lonzo. Oh man, I fucked up. Uh, Lonzo is Lonzo's a good like. Lonzo really likes Julius, and that's why I think he would go there. And he's always mm. talked about liking the guard. I know that's the the cliche with the garden but i feel like lonzo's a player who wants to prove himself in that kind of way and he would love to be a part of that as where i feel like going going to the celtics isn't i feel like gonna prove the same thing for him i feel like while lonzo plays right basketball i feel like lonzo has a pretty big ego about the type of player he wants to be and i feel like he's kind of upset by the way he's been portrayed. So I feel like Mm -hmm. personally he would probably either go to, he would, he would either go to the Clippers to stay in LA to be close to family, or he would go to somewhere like the Knicks or somewhere that's like a piece away that he could be the defining piece that, you know, pushed them over the edge. You think that would be like Miami? I think it'd be a good fit down there. I don't know if he would go to Miami. I think, it's weird because I feel like I don't know. I got to think what team would he end up going to? I feel like he, he wants a big market team. Yeah, he wants. Like, a I don't big think he's happy team. in New Orleans because, like, as as like quiet and soft spoken as he was, like when he got mm-hmm. drafted and his dad was doing all the talking. I I, I think part of him is like his dad more than yeah, you he might want to admit. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Go to Milwaukee. I'm... He's not going to Milwaukee. Uh, <laughs> No, I, I think, think you're right. I, think, I really I think, think that's the problem. Is that's why I only think it's – I don't think he's going to the Celtics because I don't think he wants to be no. in that kind of system. 
But I yeah. do think he is going to a big market team that really only leaves Clippers and Knicks that fit him. You know what I mean? Yeah. So. Yeah. I don't know. Welcome we'll back, see. Chris. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, Apologies you, you for just having gave a everybody the sports half gen podcast for the past. Yeah. Seven. Tony was very quiet. Fair enough. Last week, uh, I love no sports. Yeah, we, we did the MCU and DCEU or C, DCCU. DC. DC. Yeah, I think it's DCU. Yeah, yeah DCEU. It's DC Extended yeah. Universe. Yeah, we did that breakdown last week. Um, did we talk more about games or? No, it was just all sports. Welcome oh. to Sports Gen, everybody. Sports yeah. Gen. It's one of our oh spin offs. Not sports gen, just basketball gen. Sports gen. Yeah. Most about my Mets if you sports guys gen and a gen. Uh, we got it. Yeah. Comic gen. We still never yeah. got any gen off the ground. We have one episode recorded. It's, one whole episode. It's, it's, we're like when it comes to that, we're like Valve. It'll yeah. come out. It'll eventually. It'll but it won't yeah. be what you think. Yeah. <laughs> it's gonna be in VR. <laughs> yeah. Nat, you mean you'd start up this the basketball spinoff of Half Gen? Start that website. <laughs> I mean, if you want to do it, do Pass it. Pass Gen. Uh, what was that? Pass Gen. Like passing the ball. Yeah, Ain't it's no possible. Pass. What about like Dunk Gen? Tim yeah. Dunk Gen. That, that doesn't have. That has like a. a I feel like pass- thing to it. I feel like past gen is very easy if people have a problem with us to just remove that first letter and have a very easy, easy insult. (laughs) Don't give them ideas now. (laughs) Anyway, video games. Yeah, that's a that's a different thing. That's like an OnlyFans, all right? Uh, Yeah, it's coming soon to OnlyFans. Ask Jen. (laughs) (laughs) My God. Hey, we got to make if money I somehow. my job, man. <laughs> it's going to be a lot of Nest thermostats and baby oil. I'm to support this podcast somehow. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we they don't, don't have they, any sponsorships, though. They can, they can support the podcast the... on anchor.fm. Nah, slash man, I'm not. I'm, there's no baby oil, none of that, man. I have nice feet. We're going to have the feet, the feet only fans. I'm not I'm not into that. I'm putting, I'm putting my feet all over it. I got really Tony, nice have you feet. played any other games that you want to talk about? You know I'm talking about my feet? No. <laughs> <laughs> No, I don't. Let's oh. talk about. It. Oh, no, not really. Haven't. Um. Well, <laughs> remember, okay, you can talk about any 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 game you played. Doesn't need oh, to be. Oh, recent. Chris, just just brief note while you were gone, we did get another potential title. Uh, Tristan Thompson looks like a black Ken doll. Is up there. See, but that's too wordy. That's pretty long. If you put it, that's I can put it in the long. description. So if you type it anyway, into the staff chat, type that into the staff chat. I'll put it in the description. Okay. Um, I played a little of Monster Hunter Rise. Ooh, still uh, can't get used to the combat in that game. It's really. I think it just might be the combo, the whole combo thing, because I used the long sword. Because you know, I love my myself some katanas. But yeah, I think that's pretty much anything new in my life so far. I think the first thing I'm gonna do before I start that game is look at a video of all the weapons and figure out what I want to use. Yep. That's what I, and then to. I'm going to remap I all the controls. Cause I remember from the demo hating them. So I'm going to remap okay, so everything kind of hit. Cause I keep, I keep accidentally using items. I was, was going to say, you should just play the demo over and over and try out the weapons instead of watching. But you I already start off the with the long sword. So why would I play the demo? I'm yeah, kidding. He already has the game. Uh, he just no. I I just want to watch a video it. just to get an idea of kind of like what the potential is, um, and just see like okay, do I want to take the time to learn something or do I want to just pick up and go? You know. Yeah, there was a video that I watched that like goes over a brief like description of them all. But then he has other videos that go into a more in depth into the weapons that you want. Uh, can't think of it who it was yeah because i remember the most i played of like monster hunter world was when i used like the gun the gun was cool but like i I didn't have a lot of fun playing that solo and so like if i'm gonna use the gun i definitely want to be in a group yeah that's also another thing i 
why I didn't really play world that much because I just didn't want to play it by myself. I got tired of doing that. Yeah. I was having this conversation with one of my friends the other day. World would be so much a bigger game if it had crossplay. Because it was on so many platforms and everybody had it on different platforms. If it was crossplay, I feel like people would enjoy that game a lot more. Well, that yeah, and if it was on weren't... PS Plus. Mm-hmm. It still is. It was on Game yeah, Pass. I have it on PS Plus. I do as well. Yeah. But, um,. I, I also just wish they weren't so like stubborn about how like the co-op works because they have that thing where it's like, oh, you, like people have to wait until you watch this cutscene, you know, so you have to play the like the map to a certain point before it will even let other people join in. And like, that's just yeah. so like asinine. It's just such I a didn't like that. That's why we couldn't play when we tried to play. Yeah, because like, and that's the thing is like the, the servers were having problems. So by the time I would get to a point, you know, someone would get disconnected and they haven't even played yet. And, you know, so then we got to start over and I got to go through all the stuff again because like, you know, it, it was just really frustrating. And I know it's better now than it was then. Uh, but like, it's just like so dumb where it's just like, OK, play a bunch of this by, by yourself while your friends wait or everybody does it. And then you like call friends in or something. But like. That's just such a dumb way to do it. Like, I'm just not, you know, that, that is a very like backwards way of doing multiplayer. You either need to go all the way and just have multiplayer or you shouldn't do it at all for the campaign. Like you need to make that decision. It's a, if it's a single player campaign, cause that game is balanced around being able to have multiple people in there. So you either need to make it balanced for one player and then not let other people join or you just need to go in with all the people at once. Like, it, that's how the game needs to be. And, you know, I, we'll see how Rise is, but whatever. Because they're going to make another Monster Hunter World. It's inevitable. Because that game did very well. And the new platforms will be able to run it better than ever. That game needs to support proper multiplayer from the start. It shouldn't be a stupid thing where you got to ride this elevator, go to this lobby, find this room, join, wait, 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 then play, then go back, then do it again. You should just be able to party up with your friends. They come into your world and you just launch a mission. Their Capcom has games that like do a better job already that have done yeah. a better job mm -hmm. already. Yeah, I think that's how monster hunter rise does it because there's like uh an npc you talk to to do all the like online stuff but i haven't really touched it yet so i'm not sure how that works yeah. but in monster hunter world they had like a kind of like gathering hub where people can be in a party but, but that's what i'm saying like don't like the gathering hub was still just like you're in the gathering hub but then you gotta like still like get it like the guy if you're gonna have a gathering hub it needs to just be easier or just get rid of the gathering hub altogether and just let people be in your world like, let people join you in your base and go and do stuff. Like, why do you have to go to a specific zone for co-op? Like, that's just such a dumb thing. You know, you're playing the well, game together. Especially because you can just, like, pick random people up from the gathering zone. So it didn't really make any sense. They should have just kept it the way the DS versions played, where you just, you know, you meet up with your friends, you decide you're going on a hunt, and then everybody picks that hunt. And then before it loads in, you choose if you want to join your friends or not. Yeah, I don't understand the decision to do. Yeah, it, it's just so world. so many other games like Dauntless, perfect example. Dauntless was so effortless to get in a group. I know we haven't played that in a while, but it was so effortless to get in a group and just go on a mission. And then we come back, we do all our stuff in the same zone. We didn't have to go anywhere special, and then we just go out and do another mission. Like it just worked. I, I don't understand why Capcom has to be so difficult about it. You know, like I, I sometimes I feel like it's easier to play Dark Souls in co-op than it is Monster Hunter. That's saying something. Imagine that when Dark Souls is easier. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. But uh, so yeah, uh, Ross and I were talking about it earlier. We played Park Attack. Ross, this was your first time playing Park Attack. It was. It was. How, how did you like it? I I know the answer, but let the people know. I I hated it. It was yeah. awful. Yeah. yeah no, know. it was a uh, it was a lot of fun. It's the first uh, kind of like tycoon type game I've played in a long time. Um and yeah, it's just like it's it's not crazy or, or flashy or anything, but it just works and it's and it's fun. Um, I I could tell fun. at first you were like a yeah. little you were a little timid about some of the stuff cuz you were just like 
when you first loaded in, you were definitely just like slowly kind of trying to take it all in. Yeah, just like, like figuring out the different yeah. systems and and all the yeah. But like once you started like asking questions and then like a half hour later, you're just doing stuff. And like that was so much fun. Like Ross was just he he like Ross is definitely the type of person who wants to take it all in and he goes very slowly. He just went with it in this and like that was a ton of fun, Ross. Just like seeing you kind of just be like, "Hey, fun with I'm going to Ross just starts building stuff and he's just like, all right, I'm going to decorate this shit. I'm going to put this ride over here. I built all this stuff over here. And I'm just like, holy crap. Like I'm looking, I'm like, when did you build this? And he's just like, oh, I built that like 10 minutes ago. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's real good. And then I put cactuses in places. Yeah. Yeah. And he Not put cactuses Steve's, and man. shapes too, that uh, were inappropriate for a family park. Hey man, there's no safety on the moon. No, Why this was in the families? desert. This was in the. Yeah, this was on. We Earth. had a, we had a first, we had a first run, which, which didn't end well. We watched, I mean, I feel we like that's part for the course. We did <laughs> the same thing, and Nightmare <laughs> built this crazy coaster, and we couldn't sustain the coaster. It no. looked cool, yeah. but people were snapping their necks on it or something. Yeah, because I, I didn't get the G's right. Um, but oh, yeah, okay. no, so nah, this one was terrible because like we kept, we, we built the park. We built like the whole park first mm -hmm. and it was all really good and well done, but we didn't open early enough. So we spent all this money. So our first couple months were just losing, losing, losing money. And then by the time we started like realizing what was wrong, it was too late. So we just watched our money bleed dry and like, we're just sitting there and it's sort of like, it's been an honor. <laughs> The, as the Jeez. as the Titanic sinks and we're just yeah. playing violins, <laughs> yeah. it was, it was just slap like violins in the middle of the park, just play it out. I I put out like a bunch of broken wagon wheels and like a dead body out there, like a skeleton. That was fun. That was like all I could do at the time because I was like, well, fuck it. <laughs> Yeah. Like bury something yeah. here and the bank just kept coming after my park and I'm like, <laughs> leave me alone, bank. Our new park though, <laughs> our new park. Is damn good. The final frontier. Do, doing better. Still, like, not making a ton of money. But we're profitable. Some reason. But we are profitable. Yeah, we're barely profitable. I don't know how to What we need money. to do is we just we just need to build more rides. We need more people coming in, and that's going to lead to more money. You need... What was yeah. the bread and butter of our park was you need more... You need more cheap rides that people could just get on. It was yeah. that black and yellow ride that... <laughs> That like saucer ride or whatever in your park that was like really popular. It was always packed. Oh, I have one of those in this one. I'm waiting for us to unlock the McCammer again though, because I'll bring that back in a heartbeat. Oh, I the want the McCammer. Ross, the our park just so we could see the McCammer queue line and everything. That's too good. <laughs> the McCammer. Uh, when it God, goes out of control, I love that. Wipes out the whole line. Oh, I love it so much. <laughs> the McCammer is out of control. <laughs> Oh shit! But yeah, I I really really like Park Attack. Like Park Attack is weird because it's scrat. It it does the same thing for me that like a sieve does or like a Sins or a Stellaris, where it's like I could just lose hours to it, and like I could just play it forever, even though it's not like it, it's it's engaging in a very different way. But it 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 it, it consumes me in that same way, and I love that's, it. Like that's what I'm saying. And man. I just you like just lose I, time in it. And it's like weirdly stressful too, because like you know, like that first park, and Ross and I are just sitting there, like, what do we do? Like, how do we fix it? <laughs> and Ross just didn't. I, Ross was like, "No, my baby." <laughs> he didn't want to let it go. He was just like, Chris "How knows, can this I'm happen?" A, I'm a aesthetic man. I, I go around and add all little flowers, the sneaky speakers, Chris Kit fire for the next five hours. <laughs> yeah, because you put them under water towers. <laughs> yeah, man. Yo, our park is looking sharp. Like we're. Our our happiness is like through the roof. We got like eighties and everything. Yeah, everything's our good. Chinese food the, is profitable. The, the, I the, really, the profit. yeah. I say I really like games like that, and I really wanted to get into. Uh, well, why am I drawing a blank? It's not you know there was like a zoo version of this game. Why am I Planet Coaster? I really want to get into Planet Coaster, but Planet Coaster annoys me because there's no grid and stuff just snaps and whatever and even no matter how hard you try i feel like stuff would always get off of alignment like and it would just annoy me so like i would try to build like a very systematic like road layout and stuff 
but like even following like like the grid because like you could do curved roads in park attack and stuff but it's like the way you would do it in planet coaster i feel like you could never line them up correctly and it would just always drive me legitimately insane yeah it's yeah i'm i want to i want to get a game that's like zoo tycoon because i remember playing that and i just loved having all the animals zoo tycoon uh planet coaster zoo Planet Planet Zoo is is that so like Planet Coaster has their game which is I think Planet Zoo or whatever. Mm-hmm. But if you're gonna be anal about the path and like the clipping and stuff, that game mm-hmm. might not be for you. Although you are building pens and stuff, so you have a little more wiggle room for like right, you know right. how you want to make stuff look. Gotcha. But I love yeah. those types of games. I'll lose even if I don't like it. I feel like minimum I will lose five hours in them. I feel like we always talk about this every time we talk about a game like that. But remember that time we all played SimCity? Yeah. Oh, and yeah. It's good times every time we do it for like a day or two. And then that's something like goes wrong. Me and like our park was so good together because it was like we struck the balance of like Nightmare City was all crazy and everything. And my city was all tranquil but poor as shit. <laughs> and Nightmare City was <laughs> rich as shit. Yeah, <laughs> I was all hazard. about making the money. And he was all about, like, making a nice city. And so we struck the balance. I was in charge of finances. And, like, I would place rides and stuff. And I'd be like, okay, so we're going to do this here. Like, I, I was, like, a big – I was the ride planner. And I was finances. And Nat was in charge of beautification and, like, storefronts. And so Nat would build all these nice promenades and the, all these and shopping build centers. The really crazy aesthetic rides. Remember? Yeah. Like, and, yeah. And like then Nat would, City. Pop down, <laughs> Nat would plop down a random roller coaster. Like, I'm like, okay, cool. Let's save up our money and do this. Brainchild. Nat spends $6,000. <laughs> I'm like, what did you do? Night City. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it was I made Neon it Cyberpunk City, theme. and then it no, funny. it was Neon City, and then I changed it to Night City, and the line went through the roof, and that was already no, no, more successful than Cyberpunk. You, you changed it. I didn't realize you could change the lettering on it, so you changed yeah. the lettering. But I was already putting together a Cyberpunk image package to replace yeah. all the signs, <laughs> so it looked like a Cyberpunk theme ride. He did put like Cyberpunk signs all over it and stuff, and then I changed it to Night City, and it just like it became one of our most successful rides ever, and then. It was right across the street from the McHammer. Yep, right across from the McHammer, uh, next to the McDonald's, uh, which was the most profitable burger place we had in the whole park. Uh, after that was the five guys in the Promenade Select. I'm not going to, you know, toot my own horn, but I made a very nice raised uh, platform promenade for like, so people would walk up the with stairs. Us when we did that? That uh, was a collaborative. Was God troll. God troll, yeah. But yes, it was a collaborative effort because I wanted to do it. All I knew is I wanted to build an elevated, like, shopping, like, eating area. And so I managed to build one and then we saved it so I could build it anytime I want. Not only that, but we figured out it has such a small footprint because the employee path comes from under the ground. Yeah. So, you know, so like, Park Tech has this stat where people will get mad at you if they can see your employee paths. So it had this really sneaky, like, come up from under the ground to to stock the back of the store. I think that was my idea, just... too. I, like, I was sneaky with that. That was the best thing I designed in the whole park. That's why I take some credit for it. It was the one thing that I did that was really nice. <laughs> Yo, Planet Zoo is 50, 50% off right now. I'm very tempted. Is that a co-op? <laughs> hey, man. Just make sure you eat dinner before you start. I'm trying to see if Planet Zoo has come. I don't want the wife to be mad at me because I recommended you Planet Zoo. <laughs> um, but yeah, so Parkitect continues to be one of the most fun games I, I've been playing when I play it. Um, otherwise, have I been playing anything else? Um, okay, so I'm going to run down a couple games uh, real quick. Um, I played more Valheim. I put like... 10 or 12 hours in it this past week. I'm really, really enjoying Valheim. Uh, like that game has finally kind of struck the chord with me that it's striking with a lot of people. I'm really enjoying it. Beat the first boss. I've been building up my new base. I've been playing with friends th- this time instead of by myself, which has been a much better experience. Just having somebody else there to like, Hey, let's go exploring. Cool. Let's do that. Or, Hey, let's go so build a base. All right, let's do that. You know? So that, that's been a ton of fun. Um, Tony was there for one of those sessions. Uh, we went exploring yes, in the Black Forest for a little while, and then we got our, our base was attacked because the forest moved. 
Uh, and so I'm like running around. So basically sometimes in the game, it'll just the forest, (laughs) the forest moves against you is what it'll say. And it'll just spawn a bunch of enemies outside your base and they attack your base. And so I'm sitting there. I'm like, what the hell does that mean? So I go outside and I just see like nine dudes running at me and I'm just like, Tony, Tony (laughs) running around. And he's just like, what? I'm like, they're here. They're here. I like my idea better. I thought you were going to say like, like, the forest was on the back of a tortoise and it got up and walked away. Or oh, something. that'd be so dope. Your base was not in cover. Anymore. Oh, that would be dope. <laughs> Imagine learning that the hard way. Just takes mm-hmm. half the base with just it. Just takes half the base. Eventually it comes back, but it's not aligned right. And it's just like, come on. Ross <laughs> made a bad decision and bought uh, Planted Zoo just now. I can see. No, I didn't. I, I didn't. It, it doesn't have multiplayer. Okay. Which sucks. Well, I mean, you can no. still play. It doesn't mean you can't uh, play it. It's like tycoon games. Are that's why I like uh, Park so, Attack, because that game has so, scratched so, such an itch. So that's the bad news. I Oh, does this have multiplayer, though? Hmm. Oh. You found Zoo right. Attack? He's still researching. <laughs> no, 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 no. So, okay, I'll keep going while Ross is researching. Yep. Uh, I played uh, Evil Genius 2. I don't know if any of you have... Um, damn it. PlayStation Plus. Hmm? Ah! I keep Dark? seeing that game everywhere, but no. Yeah. So e- Evil Genius Two, like, are you guys familiar with like Dungeon Keeper or like that Dungeons game that's a little more recent, where like you 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 don't play as like a character, you're more building like a dungeon, and like the good guys are trying to come in, and you got to stop them. So basically, you're like you're like Doctor Evil, and you're building Doctor Evil's base. You're a Bond villain. Mm. You're you are building the base where Agent Forty Seven will go when he has to get a hit on you. Like, so you're building that base, you're hiring the minions, you're, you know, stacking your gold and stuff like that. I haven't played a ton of it. Uh, Russell in the chat is a big fan. I owe him some play time on that either tonight or tomorrow. But, um, I played a little bit so far. It's, it's interesting. I'm waiting for it to kind of build up. Cause like the front for my base is like a big casino. So I want to get that rolling. Um, but like, you know, you go around the map, you set up little bases and just be like, okay, I want to recruit this scientist or I want to get the heat off me or like, I want to do these other things that are going to make me money or destabilize and things like that. Um, it seems like it'll be a pretty fun game. Uh, I don't know, like, I don't know if it's going to grab me like long-term, like, oh, I'm going to keep coming back to this game all year. might be a game that like, Hey, you know what? I'll play it a little bit now play it a little bit later. It might be one of those games that I come back to sporadically, maybe not like a, you know, every week type thing, but we'll see what happens. Uh, you know, I'm still very early. I just like my history with games like that is I'll play them for like a day or two, like really hardcore. And then I'll take a break. I, I play those. Like I play Sim city. Ross does not look happy. I'm so upset. What happened? I'm so no, these games don't have multiplayer. I thought they I don't found need the perfect to. You can, Architect you can, is the only you one. Can, Architect and SimCity are the only. Don't ones. worry about us, Ross. Yeah, Tycoon. I won't get by. For some reason, I have more. Really have I have more too. fun. And I saw Jurassic World Evolution on sale on Steam for like eleven bucks, where you yeah. create a theme park of Jurassic Park. That's made by the people yeah, who made Planet Coaster. That game. I'm upset. I'm just. I'm. I'm upset now. Keep. Keep going. I'm just sad now. Um. The other game I played uh, that I wanted to make sure... Uh, oh, uh, Tony and I also played some Elemental Tower Defense 2. Um, it's based on the Tower Defense game from StarCraft, WarCraft 3, and StarCraft 2. Uh, a lot of those games are getting spun out uh, because you know they realize that those games are really popular and can make money. Uh, I think another game like that is like the Squadron Tower Defense um, that has like its own standalone game now, but... Um, we played that last night. That was a ton of fun. But um, Outriders is the other game uh, I put some time into. And I know on this very podcast, I had initially expressed very negative opinions about Outriders. And I know that I walked those back already. I want to walk them back all the way. Outriders is a damn fun game. It's just everything about the tutorial is bad. Everything about the portion of that game that's in the demo is genuinely bad. And only when you play the game for real do you realize that the game is actually fun and that they just blocked you off from it in the demo, which in my opinion is a huge mistake. 
because Outriders is a ton of fun. The, the mechanics that are the best right now are like the mod system. So my character being a tank, I have this ability that lets me like armor up. So I reduce damage taken by 65%. Normally lasts about eight seconds, but I got a mod that increases it. So I got an item that I don't use anymore. I broke this item down. So I get to keep that mod. The mod increases the duration by 100%. So now I get to have it for 16 seconds, which is already great. But then I got another item with another mod that adds two seconds for every kill I get while I'm in it. So now I'm just diving into enemy lines, armoring up and gunning people down because that heals me when I kill them when they're close to me. And with the reduced damage, I'm I'm just rolling, you know, like I can't even complain. Like I'm having a great time because I finally feel like a tank. I'm going around, I'm gunning everything down. I'm armored up and I can keep it for most, if not all of a battle. So like when the loop gets going and when they actually let you like interact with the systems, that game is incredible. You know, it, it's not just like gears of borderlands or anything like that. Like there is, there is a lot to that game that they just don't show in that demo. And I think it's a real mistake. Yeah, it's. I'll be excited once they fix the crossplay between console and PC, because um, I've been wanting to play it as well. I downloaded it on Game Pass on Xbox. How's that been? Got through the t- how's that been running yeah, on the uh, on the One S? Not bad at all. Yeah, not, I, I was just not, curious. Not many complaints. No, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, cause... I haven't put a ton of time into it. I got past the tutorial um, and kind of. I got my powers and yeah. then um, kind of stopped shortly after that. But um, I was having a lot of fun with it and I just want to play co-op. But as of the time of this recording, the console to PC crossplay is not working correctly. So yeah. just waiting on that patch and but like looking forward to it. Yeah. As your world tier goes up too, that's when you're going to start seeing like those rare items. So like the blue items, the blue rarity it's is where you're going to start like seeing the, those mods. It's like the, what's it called in Diablo? Torment. The Torment. Yeah, yeah. it's like Torment. Yeah. yeah. But, um, yeah. Do you have that set to auto or did you man- do you manually change it? I think it's auto uh, by whatever default. Whatever it defaults to. Okay, I think yeah. it's auto. Yeah. I think I'm on, so I think I'm on two right now. So, um, so yeah. Yeah. But, um, yeah, like. Outriders has surprised me a lot. Like that game. I if you, uh, still drop frames at that staircase. No, because DLSS. Like, so yes, I still drop what, frames to, at that staircase, but in the 1.0 release, they added DLSS. So now yeah. my frame rates through the roof. So even there, I still stay above 60. I think it's a loading zone on that staircase. I think that's probably. why the frame dip is happening. Cause it's probably loading the zone ahead uh, because it probably doesn't need that when you're not near it. Um, but yeah, I, my frame rate hasn't dropped below 60. Most of the time I'm in like at the lowest, maybe the high eighties, low nineties. A lot of the time I'm over a hundred FPS in that game. Like even playing in ultra wide, like that game is running very well. Um, my only complaint has really been the server stuff because you know, it, it's, it's, I've been playing friend of the site, Uber. Um, we've been playing together and the thing is, is like, sometimes he gets a little jumpy, like he'll, he'll kind of just teleport around a little bit. So like I'll be shooting and then all of a sudden he's there and then I think I know where he is and all of a sudden he's 10 feet behind me dead, you know, and I, I can't always keep track of him because the game is just a little inconsistent with that. Uh, but at, at least from what he's told me is it hasn't had any impact on his end. Everything looks fine for him. So he's been having a good time. Uh, yeah, I'm really, really enjoying that game, like in a way that I was not expecting when I first played that demo. So, you know props to the team at people can fly like they I, you know, when i first played that demo i was like these guys are talking a lot of, you know and it doesn't seem like their game is going to cash that check but uh it turns out that they knew exactly what they had made they just didn't show it very well so yeah, yeah. that's the thing like first impressions on games like these are kind of important yeah, no, I agree. I, 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 I canceled, like I, I had a good deal on the game. I bought it. I canceled it because I was yeah, like, no, I canceled my pre-order also, as well. Yeah. So, I, you know, you're not going to turn to, I know, you know, pre-ordering games, but you know, 20% off is 20% off. Um, 
I think we just lost Nat. I think yep. we just lost Nat. Fantastic. Well, it wouldn't be a wouldn't be a podcast week if we didn't lose him for a little bit. Yeah. Hmm. Um, yeah, so we'll see how that turns out. I don't know how this will work now because it records a local backup. Mm, yeah. Have you lost them before using this? Nope. Oh. Oh, well, this could screw up the entire thing. Well, worst case scenario, uh, we ripped the MP3 from the video well, that I mean, we, we have just from stop my it, stream. Start a new one, and then I'll just splice them together. That too. You can also do that. Do we want to wait for him, or do we want to keep going? Doesn't matter to me. Um, message him. See what happened. Yeah. Let me shoot him a message. <sighs> Oh, by the way, in DC Universe, we were playing as villains. Okay. Uh, I just, it's mostly downloaded like on me. the PS5, and I was able to log in. Level 27, Hella Dope Shaka Bra. I'm going to look up DC Universe. What's the online? What's the um, level limit on there? Oh, he's oh, back. He's back. <laughs> uh, it's 30. Wow. So we My were, internet went down for like I'm telling you, seconds. It's really low. And it's weird for because Zencaster wouldn't so let me like join game back until I closed the tab and then had to go that's into Discord. Really even though I had the same link open, it was like you have it open. For a game that's been out for so long and still getting updated. T- Tony, do you hear uh, Do you hear Nat talking? Nope. I don't think he can join mid-recording. I mean, he did. Chris He's did here. Hear me? Yeah, I heard him. Well, no, he, I, don't... I can but, hear you. So yeah. Apparently Tony can't hear you. Oh yeah, I can't hear him. I can hear him actually. Perfect. <laughs> All right. So here's what we're gonna do: technical <laughs> difficulties. Um, we're just gonna we're just gonna keep going with it. We're gonna just rip the audio from the video. Uh, we'll, well just if they take can't it. hear each other, then we have to. Yeah, if I can't like, hear, they, they, they can't hear each other. Yeah. So he, here's the thing: we don't we don't need to worry about Zencaster anymore. Uh, we just go on the Discord. We keep recording. We just rip it from the podcast from the stream. Yeah, that's fine. Easy peasy. Okay. So we can just close yeah, out wow. of this. Uh, Discord. Yeah. So I guess no video version this week. <laughs> um, there we go. I mean, sure, I could just turn on my video in this. That makes it easy. Uh, but I'm not recording it. So. Oh, okay. I was going to say well, you can't just use the Twitch mod. Yeah, how are we gonna well, yeah, so so we'll we'll do we can off. we'll do the video up to that point and then after that we'll just have no video, I guess. I guess I'll just slap a technical difficulties up and that'll just be it. Yeah, just throw that up and then just let the recording keep go. Keep going. Um Yeah, so Okay. Um where did we leave off? I'm like trying to think now because now, oh, that's what I was doing. I was Talking turning on my camera. Yeah. No, I was turning on my camera. There we go. So at least there's something on the stream. Um, yeah, so Outriders is really good. I'm a big fan. I, I look forward to playing more of that. Um, otherwise, you know, played the usual Destiny. Um, played a little more Bravely Default 2. But not not enough to really talk any more about it than I already have. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that's uh that's kind of where I'm at for that. Um, it's me. Through. Yeah. Uh, so I have obviously Do you have any luck finding your your game you were looking for. <laughs> no, no, I no, I didn't. Uh. Yeah, so Parkitect was a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to it. We almost didn't record the podcast tonight because I almost put up a fight to keep playing instead of record the podcast. So shows you how much I was liking it. Um, and then the rest of my time this week in terms of gaming has mostly gone toward uh, Marvel's Avengers. Um, I haven't played it since the PS5 patch came out. And... I I wish I wish more people that I know played that game cuz the 
combat in that game is super fun. <laughs> I just, I just want, I just want people to play with. But I think yeah, it's, I feel like it's too late else. for a lot of people. In that multiplayer, I mean, it's gotten game is it's great. gotten significantly better since launch, um, like significantly better. Um, but but yeah, it's I played through the first uh, Kate Bishop DLC today. Uh, got through the rest of that. That was a lot of fun. Uh, uh, they actually set up a a good like long term story um, for their for like the post game that can. Uh, that can go for a long time to be, to be honest, um, through multiple, multiple character stories and, and story expansions, that sort of thing. So pretty excited about that. The, uh, the Hawkeye DLC, I think it's called future and perfect is next, yes. uh, for me to, for me to tackle. So, uh, yeah, it's, I'm not sure if I'll tackle that right away. I want to get just one character to, to max level. So that's kind of what I'm working on right now. Just getting, uh, Thor's my guy, so I'm working on getting Thor to max level, level fifty, uh, and then, and then I'll tackle the DLC, and then uh, I'll work on grinding the other characters up as well, uh, just because, like I said, the combat's fun in that game, and each character plays like so differently that it's it's awesome, it's it's really good, it's really good. I hope that, uh. I hope that it continues to improve um, and that it won't get shut down. So we shall see. We shall see. But uh, that's what I've put most of my other time into. And then I also just, as we were briefly talking about, uh, downloaded DC Universe Online because, like I said, I'm level, we were level 27 and the max level is 30. So we were like just smelling the end of the game. Yeah, we were and right I there. really want to beat that game. So, uh, so yeah, it is finishing up installing on the, my PS5, and I'm looking forward to jumping back into that with my uh, my Chloe Price uh, ripoff from Life is Strange. Hello Character Dope, name Shaka is Hello Dope Shaka Bra. <laughs> yep, she uses guns. So, it's pretty awesome, and I can't wait to play more of that that game is still getting new content which is crazy to me but people still play that game so yeah I which need is to, great i need to reinstall that yeah yeah so yeah that's mostly after chris and my mcu dcu deep dive last week i got really really into uh the idea of wanting to play some comic book stuff again. So DC universe and then Marvel's Avengers. And I've gotten super back into reading comics as well using, uh, the Marvel unlimited and DC universe, infinite apps to read uh, just a ton of comics. So, uh, so yeah, that's kind of, uh, that is what I have been playing. Fantastic. It's good. It's good when we have, I like when we have a lot of games to talk about. It's one of my favorite things. Yeah. Yeah. It's good. It's good. Yeah. And then next week, I'm not going to have anything to talk about because I'm just not going to want to play games anymore for whatever reason. No, 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 Thanks, no, 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 no. We can talk about this. <laughs> <laughs> All right, friends. I want to talk about the upcoming Mass Effect Legendary Edition. Uh, Bioware, uh, like, Two days ago now, uh, they dropped a big, big piece uh, about the gameplay calibrations that they're making to the game. So they're talking about balancing, tuning and mechanical improvements. This is one of two major breakdowns they're going to do, uh, apparently, prior to the release of Legendary Edition in May. So I thought it'd be cool since we're all Mass Effect fans. Let's go through this. Let's talk about some of these changes. Uh, because I read through this whole thing and I'm very excited for a lot of what they're talking about. Um, so kind of going bit by bit here, I, you know, I'm not going to read the whole thing. Um, there's a lot of like explanations as to why they do some of the things they do. Um, but you know, the, the first thing and the big thing, uh, that they're talking about is they, they wanted to, kind of make the, the trilogy feel a little more consistent from beginning to end. 
uh, instead of kind of like Mass Effect 1 being its own feel and then Mass Effect 2 kind of being closer to what 3 would be, but not quite, but way different than 1. So like they're trying to make them all feel a little more consistent, uh, which I'm all for. Uh, they're rebalancing some abilities. They're changing a, like the way some of the skills work. Uh, but here, here's kind of the, the breakdown as they go. Uh, here's one of the biggest changes, I think, uh, and this specifically pertains to um, Mass Effect 1. Shepard can now sprint out of combat. Huge. Huge. I remember you would you would try to press what you thought would be the sprint button, and then the camera just got a little bit lower and shaky. Yeah. Yep. Shepard can now sprint out of combat. Able to do that before. That is just that that. is a massive change. Pretty big quality of life. Massive. It'll it'll have a mass effect on the game. Uh, All right. That's why the Knicks are winning. Because of that. <laughs> <laughs> um, melee attacks are now mapped to a button press rather than automatically occurring based on proximity to an enemy. I think that's also okay. a very big change is being able to control when you melee. Because sometimes, like, if enemies... Because sometimes in Mass Effect, especially in the first game, I feel like some enemies just had a habit of running right at you. And I just want to keep shooting. And sometimes, like, you just start swinging. And I don't want to do that. I just want to keep shooting you with my gun. So, I, well, I do think that's a big change. I don't, th- I don't really care because there's not multiplayer anymore. <laughs> like that was the biggest well, problem for that for me was multiplayer. Yeah, but regardless, it's still, it's a quality change. I like it. Um, weapon accuracy and handling has been significantly improved, uh, and a lot of this. Um, so you can't see this. Unfortunately, a lot of this stuff is bolded. So this part specifically and the melee attack part are all specific to the first mass effect because the melee issue wasn't a, that didn't happen in mass effect two and three, they had a melee button. So mass effect one's going to have the melee button. Mass effect one's going to have the sprint out of combat and the accuracy and handling. So reticle bloom will be more controlled. So your, your reticle is not going to get huge anymore. Um, but they said you will still have to control your shooting. It's not just going to be like now you're a laser beam. But Mass Effect 1 did have a problem with Bloom getting crazy. Uh, where like if you like held down the trigger, your gun was just unusable. Um, weapon sway has been removed from sniper rifles. Uh, aiming down sights uh, and the tight aim camera view has been improved. And improved aim assist for target acquisition uh, are all, it sounds like, for all games, I think that is. Um, but mostly Mass Effect 1. All relevant enemies now take headshot damage uh, in Mass Effect 1. So some enemies did not take headshot damage. Now every enemy that should will. Uh, ammo mods uh, will now drop throughout the whole game uh, instead of stopping at higher player levels. And now they can be purchased from merchants. Uh, in Mass Effect 1, all weapons can be used by any class without penalty. That's another yeah. huge one. Being able change. to just put on a gun you want to use, no ma- even if you're a Vanguard. You know, that's a big change. I appreciate that. Um, you shut up, Uber. <laughs> um, so specializations uh, are still class specific and weapons will now cool down faster. Uh, in Mass Effect 1. Uh, meta gel okay. usage has been improved in Mass Effect 1. Uh, so the base cooldown has been reduced. The leveling benefits have been increased. And they increased Liara's bonus to cooldowns for meta gel. So you'll be able to heal more effectively in Mass Effect 1. There's one thing I need to hear about Mass Effect 1. Everything else I don't really care about. There's one improvement I'm waiting to hear. Well, I hope this is it. <laughs> Inventory management improvements. Items can now be flagged as junk. Junk items can be converted into Omnigel or sold to merchants at once. And inventory and stores now have sorting functionality. That's that's big, but not what I was thinking. Uh, Some abilities have been rebalanced and weapon powers, uh, such as those that are unlocked with weapon types, have been improved. The effectiveness slash strength has been increased. uh, Duration reduced in some cases. And heat now resets on power activation. Uh, yeah. From there, they got into stuff. yeah, they got into some more uh, changes. Again, I'll specify something specific for Mass Effect One. 
Squad mates can now be commanded independently of each other in the original Mass Effect, whereas in like in two and three, you could control them individually. Mm, yeah, yeah, so yeah. now you can order them individually in the first game. Um, nice. Nice. Cover nice. has been improved across the trilogy. I'm uh, oh, sorry, I skipped one. Uh, some boss fights in the first game have been tweaked to be fairer for players, but still challenging. Uh, cover has been improved. They added additional cover to some encounters, and entering and exiting cover is now more reliable. Yeah, uh, there, there's some, especially in one, where you just have no cover. There's, like, one fucking little thing of cover, so I would end up, like, glitching near the top of stairs and just, like, using, like, stuff that's not really cover. So, that yeah, I know. Your, your prayers have been answered, and... Uh, they are fixed. Not it. There's one thing I, I need to hear. We're not done. We're not done. Okay. Um, XP has been rebalanced in the first game, and ammo drops have been rebalanced in Mass Effect 2. So this one they go into a little more detail. Um, so they said players who complete most of the game's aspects should reliably get to higher levels on a single playthrough than they could before. And there's no longer a level cap on the first playthrough of Mass Effect 1. Or of any of them, oh, nice. I don't know. So there's no more level caps on. So you'll get higher levels on your first playthrough, and there's no more maximum level in your first playthrough, which that's a good change. They have increased the drop rate for ammo in Mass Effect 2, which at first I thought, I was like, ammo wasn't that big of a deal. And ammo then I thought about deal. it, and I was like, no, wait. Ammo Especially sucks. Especially for sniper Effect rifles. Too. Especially if you use the sniper, like. So. <laughs> You would have Nat. to pick the fights you wanted to hold on, use. Hold on. So, Nat, uh, you'll like this sentence. So, we found that ammo was spawning too scarcely in the original game. So, we've increased the drop rate for Matt talking about Mass Effect 2, particularly when using a sniper rifle, since that had a reduced ammo drop rate in the original release. So, yeah. sniper rifles especially have been targeted. Um, I, I remembered wanting to main a sniper rifle, but the problem is you had to be selective because... You want to save your bullets for a big fight, and then you'd get in a fight. You like, is this a big fight? Should I use the sniper rifle? And I would always take it out <laughs> and imagine Shepard looking at it and be like, "Not today. <laughs> Now's the time." <laughs> but yeah, so the ammo economy in Mass Effect Two did need improvement, like because th there's like one part in particular. I think it's like in Omega, and like you're fighting a bunch of the like, the, the weird dudes with the fangs uh, underground. Mm -hmm. I just remember always running out of ammo in that fight. Like when I was fighting those guys, I would always be out of ammo. And like, that was the thing that popped in my head immediately when I was like, ammo was fine in Mass Effect 2. And I'm like, no, it wasn't. So thank you, Bioware. Um, Going to Tali's planet is where I ran out of ammo a lot. Yeah. It, like, it, I'm, I'm just glad they're fixing it. Um, who is ready to talk about the Mako? If they left it just as is, it was perfect. It's my beautiful baby. Um, so I, I'm going to actually read this one. Uh, so, but of course we've got to talk about the infamous M35 Mako. Uh, this legendary vehicle from the first mass effect has been quote calibrated, uh, to perform better than ever in the original game. The physics tuning for the Mako made it feel too light and bouncy even at times becoming uncontrollable, but it's now much smoother. Uh, it's now a much smoother ride while being lovable like before. Uh, yes, you can still drive off cliffs to your heart's content. Uh, its functionality has also been improved with faster shield recharging and new thrusters added to the rear, allowing for a speed boost when you're inevitably trying to scale up the side of a near vertical cliff. We all do it. Uh, this boosts recharge is independent from the jump jets on the vehicle's underside so you can use both at once or separately so the improved handling so the physics tuning improved to feel weightier uh, and slide around less so the vehicle shouldn't move around as unwieldy as it did before uh, they improved the camera uh, to prevent it from accurately aiming at like lower angles so they fixed that shields recharge faster the new thrusters the XP penalty while in the Mako has been removed and touching lava no longer results in an instant mission failure. Instead, deals damage over time. That's too much. Too much. I think Made it's the game too easy. Disappointed. Okay. Disappointed. All right. Um, they have a unified launcher now for all three games. Uh, you can set trilogy-wide settings for things like subtitles and languages. Saves are still unique to each game and can be managed independently. Uh, character creator options. So, like... Uh, 
Mass Effect 3 Femshep is now the default, excuse me, female option in all three games, but you can still pick original Femship if, Femship if that's what you want. Um, they have achievements across the trilogy that have been updated and any redundant ones have been removed. Um, they integrated weapons and armor DLC, so you don't just start with the DLC anymore. They added it to vendors, made it unlockable, things like that. So now you can just earn those through playing. Um, and then the audio is remixed and enhanced for uh, across all games. Uh, hundreds of legacy bugs from the original releases are fixed. Hey, Ross, I don't mm. know where you plan to play, but if you plan to play on PC, native controller support across the trilogy. I also, also um, have that on the console. Yeah, but um, no, I'm just saying, and I'm happy 21 by 9 display support uh, with DirectX played, 11 compatibility. I played Mass Effect on PC, and the controller worked. I Mass Effect 1 anything. had problems. Like, its controller support was wonky, I remember. Um, they rebalanced Galaxy at War from Mass Effect 3 because it's no longer impacted by, like, multiplayer. Um, but they said, so, like, what you do in the first two games has a greater impact now on your galactic readiness in Mass Effect 3. So, doing stuff in those previous two games is not required but it's huge now for making mass effect 3 if you want everybody to survive at the end it's making that a lot easier uh if you you know properly play through the first two games and make sure to do all your stuff nice uh, i so, can't wait to play through this again and make all the exact same decisions i made the first time i was gonna around. say oh, yeah, no, 100%. do again i'm just literally just gonna do the I'm same killing thing. everybody yep. no 100 i'm gonna yep. do the same thing but now that they're gonna be like easier to play together i really think yeah. I'd, i would i i my dream playthrough and my problem is is i like tally too much because like i i wanted to do a playthrough where i i was with liara for all three games um but tally so i have to do that at some point i have to do my prime playthrough where i pick tally because she's amazing um i want to do a full renegade playthrough but i want to do it as like pro humanity shepherd i want to just be nice to the humans and hate all the aliens like I want to be full on xenophobe shepherd. Yeah, xenophobe I, shepherd. But the problem I is, be full is on that Ashley. I can't, but then, and then yeah, I'm gonna romance <laughs> Ashley, uh, yeah. and I'm gonna let my best friend die because you know chicks. Um, yep. The problem is I can't recruit Garrus then. Mm. G- See, Garrus, the Garrus is my boy. Is... See the problem. He's the best character. Him, you see the problem with this is. Is while I always wanted to go back and play a different playthrough, even when I went back and played on PC after getting Trilogy, because I played before on Xbox and then came over to play on PC because I never played the third one until this last time I played through a couple years ago. I was so satisfied with my decisions. I just made the same decisions, beat three, and was like, oh, I'm I'm happy. No, I, listen. <laughs> I would, left me so content that I never went back and tried to do anything different mass Tally effect is, is the best go ahead no finish finish Tally's what you're saying please the best. i don't need to romance anybody else <laughs> he's right he's right and, <laughs> and that's it like i'm fine i'm happy i don't need i don't need anything else i was just gonna say like mass effect is one of the few games on the planet that i could play as many times as i want the exact same way and enjoy it every single time Mm-hmm. I could make all the same decisions and just have a great time. <laughs> Though I will say some of the most fun I ever had, I, cause like there was a, an achievement or something in like mass effect. Like I, I remember at one point I beat the first mass effect twice in 24 hours. Cause like, or in like two days I beat it twice in 48 hours or something. I, it was like during, I don't remember when it was, it was just before mass effect two was coming out. And so I, I had done my original playthrough and I wanted to do a renegade playthrough for the achievement. And then I wanted to do like a prime playthrough. I wanted like, I wanted to do the save I was going to carry to mass effect too. So I did that. I did a full playthrough, did everything I could. And then I just did this eight hour renegade campaign where I just did, I just shot first and asked questions later. And it was some of the most fun I ever had playing that game was just being like, fuck the side quests, fuck you, fuck you, gun out, 
bang, 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 bang. Everything's dead. And like that game is so crazy because when you play at Paragon, you're just like, ah, oh, justice for all. And then just like Renegade, you just walk into the room, you select the option, someone's already dead. <laughs> like so, first, the words out of his mouth, gun, bang. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just it's so fun it's so stupid because he just walks into the room and shoots somebody and they're just like what the hell did you do that for he's like i'm the one asking the questions around here it's like holy shit shepherd <laughs> i highly recommend highly highly recommend a renegade playthrough um but yeah so uh, what just about make the sure elevators Oh, okay. Yes. So they did talk about the elevators. There is, uh, they load faster. So the elevators are faster, but you still have the dialogue. Elevators can be skipped. Elevators are the worst part of the game. Elevators are the <laughs> best the part because enemy. you get to, you get to talk to your crew. After I will you not run skip out the of dialogue options and you, and you're just trying to get around. You can skip the elevators. One that that's the worst part. You can skip the elevators. So, congratulations. Your dreams have come true. Um, but yeah, I am incredibly excited for this remaster. Um, it's pretty much everything I could ask for. It's just Mass Effect, but, like, better. Yeah. You know, better, much so... Better quality, quality of life. Like, they're, they're fixing the uh, things uh, uh, that I would want fixed uh, without, like, doing too much. Uh, so I'm, th this is probably like my number one, most anticipated game of the year. Uh, just cause I, I, you know, I, I haven't seen the game yet. That's going to be better than mass effect this year. You know? Yeah. Maybe that's just me. Uh, I'm, I'm very excited for it. I, I am, I am so ready to play through this trilogy again. God, like, <laughs> so I got this coming out in May. I have to finish this before the 10th because Final Fantasy VII Intergrade comes out. And then the day after that comes out, Ratchet and Clank comes out. June's going to be busy. <laughs> Can't wait. And like, yo, like if we get like a summer drought for games, I'm just going to keep playing Mass Effect. Like, I'm, I'm all for it. I'm just going to play that yeah. and just keep doing playthroughs. I'll just be like, okay, so this time we're going to do this, 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 and this. And just play through the trilogy and then just be like, okay, now this time we're going to do this, 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 and this. And just see how many times I can clear the game. I am so ready to play through that again. I, I, I have to do my Renegade playthrough at some point and I have to do my Pro Humanity playthrough because I feel like that would end up being super interesting come, come Mass Effect 3 where you just don't give a shit about anyone. Like any non-humans, just fuck them, you know. I I want to see how that goes. Very interested. But oh, and they did also confirm the extended cut ending is the only ending in the game for Mass that Effect Three. So yeah, and then all the DLC I think except Pinnacle Station is included. Which nothing really lost yeah. from Pinnacle Station. Yeah. No. I think didn't Pinnacle Station like introduce the Batarians earlier or something? I can't remember which one that was, to be honest. It was the one with the like arenas, the arena combat. If you did it all, you got like an apartment. Oh, I kind of. Because I have the apartment. Yeah, Pinnacle Station, there's nothing really lost there. Mass Effect 2 and 3 are where the DLC really matters. Um, but yeah. Mass uh, Effect 1 might be my favorite, though. I will live and die by 2. And the fact that they're bringing the gameplay in 1 to be more modern with 2 and 3, I think it will solidify the fact that it is my favorite Mass that Effect. That might change my opinion, is if the that, gameplay feels that much better. Because like I like the story in 1. I The thing for me is it's not even the game, it's the characters in 2. The characters in two, I think, are the best. They're the best crew in the whole trilogy. I I love the people in Mass Effect Two. Like I, I I there's not one person on that crew that I don't like. You know. Yeah, yeah. I just need you know. I just need Garrus, Liara, 
And I'm good. And Rex? I don't need any. That's the only else. thing missing from Mass Effect 2 is Rex. <laughs> like I know he's in yeah. it, but like that's the only thing missing from my ship is Rex. You know yeah. what blows my mind? Every time somebody is like, yeah, no, I killed Rex. Like, what is it on, like, not Ilya, Pharos, or one of those two planets you go to, and Rex is just like, hey, you know, I'm going to, the fucking Solarians, you know what they did to me, and, like, you, you like if you suck, you have to kill him. Yeah. And I'm just like, imagine being that bad at Mass Effect. <laughs> You're going to have to kill you, him. You let Rex die? <laughs> what? <laughs> Oh man, but uh, yeah, I'm very excited for that. Anybody got a? I I I pulled like two quick things, uh, Ross. I don't know if you have any interest talking PlayStation now. Um, not, not really. They added. they added Marvel's Avengers to PlayStation now, which is cool. Um, anything to get more people to try it if you already have PlayStation now. But this kept us pretty much it. Uh, so I guess one thing I, I wasn't going to touch on this because I forgot it was more than a meme. Um, MLB The Show 21, you know, was obviously confirmed coming to Xbox. Um, here's the thing. When it launches on April 20th, it's launching on Game Pass. Which is insane. Because Sony's going to charge full price for it. The developer of the game and publisher is going to charge full price for it on their platform. But anyone with game pass and an Xbox can play it for free. Like I would never buy the show. I don't care about baseball to buy the show. I'll play the show on game pass. Why wouldn't I, you know, to, to at least like try it and see what the hell is up. That's insane to me that they manage that deal think it's yeah. because xbox dealt with uh the mlb and not playstation that's what it so sounds like because MLB forced their hand yeah i think yeah. the mlb is actually like i've seen the mlb listed as the publisher for the game so yeah I there wonder... was uh there was a story i think on GameSpot. it might have been somewhere else where the reason for the multi-platform was because was MLB, the mlb pushed for it yeah, yeah they yeah, weren't yeah. gonna sony wasn't gonna get to keep the license if they didn't yep. go multi-plat um yeah but I didn't think the MLB would like, like if it's the MLB that made this decision, then they just screwed over Sony. Like if I'm the MLB and you know, they're the only game in town making baseball. I don't know that I make the decision to, after you already make them release it on the rival platform, then decide, Hey, and we're going to put it on their game pass. Like that to me, is not a good business deal for Sony at that point. And I have to wonder if Sony knew. I think they're the only show in town now, though, because 2K stopped doing theirs. Yeah, 2K stopped doing theirs, like, a couple years ago. Because 2K used to have that, if you pitch a, a perfect game, you win a million dollars. And they haven't done that since, like, 2015, I think. Yeah, no, they gave up if on baseball, because their, their games were not good. Um... But like, yeah, and that's the thing. But that's what I'm saying. Like that, that's kind of if it's an MLB negotiating, you know, if Sony's involved and they're like, whatever, you know, we'll still get money from it. Then, you know, whatever, they still get money. But like if it's the MLB who's like, by the way, we're going to release this on Game Pass. I feel like if I'm Sony, I'm just like the fucking what you you what? <laughs> like, that would be that would be frustrating playstation plus because of that or something they might know. have i wonder if that's something they announced that they're like hey we're gonna put it on plus for a month because like you can't mm -hmm. how you can't compete with that yeah. like that's the thing is like everybody i hear who's playing outriders on console if they like i hear so many people yeah i had to start the game over because i did the demo on playstation but now i'm playing it on game pass like there's a lot of people who d are not going to play that game on playstation just because it's on game pass and like yeah. Game Pass is starting to kind of eat their lunch a little bit and having their game on Game Pass, having Sony's own game on Xbox's Game Pass is crazy to me. Like, I understand why it would have to go multi-platform. I understand why the MLB is looking at that money and being like, well, yeah, it's money on the table. But on Game Pass just blows my mind. 
I I I yeah. I want to know. I want to be a fly in the on the wall in that conversation and see like the money that changed hands for that. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah. MLB is the only is the only game in town. Yeah, uh, no, they have been MLB for years. And RBI, because RBI had not didn't make one last year. Yeah, like Sony's the only one making a a, a triple A annual baseball game. Uh. Because yeah, MVP doesn't exist anymore, and uh, what you call it doesn't exist anymore either. The 2K one, so yeah, I don't know if you remember the EA MVP baseball. Yeah, or that hasn't been around for like more than a decade, I think. Mm-hmm. That hasn't Dude, been around I... since like maybe early 360 PS3. Uh, 2K stopped in 2013. Yeah, I, I don't like baseball really, but MVP baseball 2005, the one with Manny Ramirez on the cover, is one of the best sports games of all time. I'll play everybody that had that. Endlessly. I don't remember anybody ever actually buying that game, but everybody had that in their collection. Yeah, I don't even know like, when I got it, but it was there. It's it's so good, <laughs> and just even like the mini games are so good. It's it's such a good game. That, like, I still I still play that. That <laughs> and like two K five, the like football one. Yeah, you yes, have yep. your own apartment. Everybody Chris, had those two games. Game. Yep. <laughs> yeah, don't NFL two K five. I have it. I that was a great it. year for sports it. games. Yo, like 2K was on it that year. $20 for the best football game ever made. I mean, come on. That was when it was Sega, man. It wasn't Sega. It wasn't well, Sega was Sega involved. Sega? Visual concepts, but like... Was Sega on the box for that? Because or... 2K published it. Did Sega develop ESPN, that? NFL football i thought it was visual concepts yeah but isn't Maybe. visual visual concepts i think was owned by sega uh, i didn't think about it. misremembering it yeah pu- pu- published by 2k sports and the sega core it was published by 2k and sega I remember and they sega both were tired of madden the and they were like fuck you 20 dollars <laughs> like what, what you make the best football game ever and you're like 20 bucks that is the equivalent of putting sony's game on game pass <laughs> That you could do in the PS2 and Xbox era. That is the closest comparison you can get. It's just being like, oh, you're you're fifty dollars, nineteen ninety nine. Yeah, and then that same year, uh, EA reduced the price of Madden NFL two thousand five to twenty nine ninety five to try and make up for it. Which I mean, still, even even if in your mind Madden was better that year, like that's when the, that's when it's still EA more track. EA put on their pants and you know cracked down and paid the exclusivity. So that's and then that price went money. right back up the next year because yeah. <laughs> yep. EA is a fucking scumbag. Oh man, God! That imagine so if that was still good. Good. yo two K five. Like you watch I had videos that for on... Xbox and PS two. Yo, like you <laughs> watch. That's the thing. You could buy it on every platform and it still costs less than that. <laughs> and you can get them for cheap now because they made so many. Cause it's sold. Like that's the craziest yeah. part. But um, like man, imagine if they were still going at it. Imagine like, cause even in like, I I know all pro football is not the best football game, but like that game, Ross, you have to agree that felt different than anything Madden has put out in the uh, last decade. I I'll, I'll, I will say that I still maintain for me, I still think like Madden O four and O five just from a strict gameplay perspective i like the way that they played way better than the 2k games did i think 2k did a lot of other stuff better um the thing about all pro it's again it's not the gameplay for me it's the the legends like that's what drew me to that game i still yeah. think madden 04 is the best football video game of all time yeah but i i just like but, like the, the the commentary the way like the way 2K yeah. handled like the pregame commentary and literally stuff like everything that. except the gameplay in 2K was way better. See, and, me, but personally. I like I like the gameplay better in 2K. Yeah. But I also played 2K. Like I, my first football game was 2K2. You know, Boom. and so half gen article. Do you remember ESPN 2K fit 2K? Yeah, 5. you should write that, Chris. I I gotta play it. I could stream yeah. it. I could stream it. We open up the crib. We play as the Eagles, and we throw to T.O. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, and and you play the first-person game mode, too. The first-person football. Yo, I remember yep. I got this guy. Wait, I don't remember why I did it, yeah. and I don't remember it what. I think I was like the Steelers or something. 
my running backs all got hurt. And so I got, I went to the bottom of the depth chart just cause, uh, on, on free agency. I signed this dude, Cecil Sapp. He's like a 52 overall. I got him to like a 1600 yard rusher. He had like 20 something touchdowns and like they recorded all the names. So at the beginning, like, you know, it's just Cecil Sapp, you know, hasn't really broken onto the scene. You know, Cecil Sapp, you know, hasn't really had an opportunity. And the next season after that, Cecil Sapp is coming off a big year leading the league and rushing. And I'm just like, fucking hell. And you know, in the two K games, the ratings didn't go up like they do in Madden. So that motherfucker was stuck in the 50s. I think he was like a 64 when I was done with him. He was just stuck in like ratings hell. But he's putting up like 2,000 yard rushing seasons. Because 2K made you work for that shit. If you got a rating, you had to work for that. And then like watching, oh God, the, the, the recap thing, like halftime watching Chris Berman talk about like all the other games and just him be like, what? 87 yards for the touchdown. Yo, I watched every halftime in that game. I skip everything in Madden cause the dude sucks, but Chris Berman, I'll watch that shit all day. They, yeah. they got the presentation of football in 2k5 has never been equaled ever. Yep. You should stream it. I should. I should. Fuck. I really should. I thought about it the other day. I was like, I should stream some 2K5. Hey, man. Article right there. It's waiting for you. <sighs> Did you play ESPN 2K5? Gotta go to my crib. I gotta, I gotta build up the crib. The crib was the best part, is just going into that room and just looking at all your, like, MVPs and your Super Bowl trophies. <laughs> God, that game was so fucking good. That game was so good. Holy shit. I mm, might have to play some 2K5. Yeah. Unrelated. It hurt me because ESPN 2K5, the basketball game, uh, I feel like was also better than live that year, but live had mellow on the cover, so I had to buy live. Because I, I was a mellow fan. Yeah, who was uh, a... Yeah. And I had a second chance to buy it. And you know what I bought instead? NBA mm. ballers. And I fucking regretted my decision. Ever since. Yeah, that's that's rough. I mean, 2K5 did not have NBA 2K5 did not have the flashiest player on the cover compared to Mello. I know. But it, when it was, you're when you're a kid and I, I think how old was I then? So I don't know. I can't ben, do math. Ben right now. I think I was yeah. like, I think I was like 12 or 13 and I was looking at it and Oops. I was like, huh? What do I buy? Do I buy the one with Mello, my favorite player? <laughs> or the or one with Ben Wallace? Me Detroit. <laughs> Yo, that, yeah. like, the football covers that year, like talk about the best players at their respective positions, you know, between Ray Lewis and T.O. in his prime in the, with the yeah. Eagles. Like that's a stacked cover Yeah, for both of them. Sure. Like, holy shit. And then both of them actually mostly survived the season. T.O. played in the Super Bowl, had over 100 yards receiving on a fucking broken leg. What the hell? A fucking broken leg, and he just like nine catches, 131 yards, and the Eagles still couldn't win. The man is playing with one leg. He put the team on his back. That was literally the, the, the Greg Jennings play in real life. <laughs> T.O. did seeing, that shit. It's crazy seeing the flip. In basketball, because live used to have all the premier like athletes, and then I think in after they had Dwayne Wade, after that they just couldn't do it anymore. They couldn't keep up, and Two K just started getting all the premier athletes. Because in NBA Live oh seven had T Mac after all his injuries and stuff, and he when he was on the Rockets, <laughs> and then yeah. like they had like they just kept having like they had like Tony Parker in oh nine, and it was just like well that's the a thing bunch of weird ones like. Like yeah, one, 08, 08 was Gilbert Arenas. Yeah, like, <laughs> but like that's the thing is once EA took away football, like I feel like football was their bread and butter. That was their big franchise. And once EA took away football, Two K was just like we have to destroy them in every other category. So they doubled down. Now they instead of having to make a football game every year, suddenly you have more assets for your basketball game. You know, the, the ill-fated baseball game. But you know, I think they were all kind of falling out of that. Uh, but like you know. 2K was just like, fuck your basketball. We're coming. Yeah. And they never gave yeah. it back. Yeah, I think 
if there's one thing we can all agree on is that Peyton Hillis is the worst sports cover video game athlete of all time. I just can't believe that after all the votes and everybody got Michael Vick to the finals, that everybody's like, but the dog thing. And it's just like, listen, we all know what he did. He went to jail. He served his time. People can change and can rehabilitate. It is possible. Let the man live and be on the cover of Madden so that Peyton Hillis can't do it. Instead, is- we have the greatest athlete of all time be on the cover. Peyton Hillis. Sidebar. 2K had uh, Chris Paul, then followed by uh, Kevin Garnett when he was on the Celtics, mm-hmm. you know, for 2009. Yeah, they, 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 just, they just completely flipped. <laughs> As yeah, far as yeah, talent goes. And then they had Kobe in 2010. And then yeah. it was all off from there. And then Kobe again. <laughs> Yo, they, 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 they were so stupid on their baseball. Like, for like six years in a row, they had Derek Jeter on the cover. Of what? Yeah. On the 2K baseball. Just every year was Derek Jeter. 2K5. Like I think like for a ton of FIFA. 2K like four. To like 2K10 was just all Derek Jeter. It would be fun one episode to go back through all the Madden and NBA video game cover athletes and see like which ones were mistakes and which ones were actually good <laughs> and compare it to the games. I mean, I'm you're, you're speaking fun. my language, but not tonight. Not tonight, but like we should definitely 2K, do that. 2K was weird because 2K sold a bunch of like regional covers. Yeah, mistaken. I forgot about that. I think they did. Yeah, and like FIFA okay. did that too. So because you were in the Northeast, they might have had just Derek Jeter on everything. Because I was, I remember online like they would have like 2K had somebody from uh, Tampa on the cover for two for 2010. Hold on, I want to see because like there's the big A cover athletes. List of standard cover athletes for MLB 2K. Because I do remember okay. what yeah. you're saying, but they had regional covers. Well, Eric Jeter was 2K5 through 2K7. Yeah. And then, yeah. yeah, okay. So it wasn't as long as I thought, but still, like three years in a row, it was him. Only reason I know that because uh, there's one of them where there's somebody from the Mets was on it, and I was pretty okay. excited about that because I'm a Mets friend. Yeah, uh, Jose, Jose Reyes. Reyes. Yeah. Oh yeah. God, I remember <sighs> I remember seeing all these covers over the years because GameStop. Mm-hmm. And GameStop used to do the tedious thing of they would have 70 things on a one wall of the same game and it'd be like one game thick to just be like, look, this game came out. <laughs> so it would be like you would walk in and there'd be a wall with just 42k cases that it, it, are like yeah. <laughs> they printed out themselves it's just amazing though because like i was definitely like a gamestop kid and so i know all of these covers and when, when i look at them i recognize all these covers because i've just seen them so many goddamn times it, it's just fucking hilarious to me because it's like i had no interest in the games at all but i know i look at these covers and i'm like yep seen it seen it seen it seen it seen it and i'm like oh right that guy was on there and i'm just like what the fuck how do i know this <laughs> just that it's just that information your brain picks up and stores somewhere you know as useless and then you just 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 that trigger to like jog it that's most of my brain useless information and random quotes ask ross (laughs) it's true the man remembers more quotes than any person who's ever existed but i always i never remember them completely correct i'm like 90 percent. i messed something up that just means you're a bigger picture kind of guy yeah I always get the general idea. Except Anchorman. I think that's the Monday. Okay, then we don't need to get into that. Um, that's the episode. Appreciate you all being here. I appreciate everybody who uh, stuck through the technical difficulties. Again, you know, it's the old saying. It wouldn't be a half-gen podcast if there weren't some technical difficulties. But um, thank you all so much for listening. I hope you have a wonderful day uh, or evening or whenever you're listening to this, whatever it is. Enjoy it. You guys want to say anything before we we call it? Thanks for listening. Um, the Knicks and, are up by uh, five. It's, yeah, the Celtics are probably going to lose. It's fine. I'm used to it this and season. Jason Tony. Tatum has 21 and Jalen Brown has 27. They can't, yep. <laughs> can't do it. 
Yep. Alfred Payne has played like fucking 25 minutes. It has five points. Yep. That, that checks out. <laughs> Goodbye, everyone. Tony, anything from you? Mm, no, this is probably like the worst podcast to have me on because you guys just talk about sports. Nah, I don't know sports. <laughs> I didn't know that was going to happen. You can't hold that against me. Yeah. So <laughs> He's going to hold one it against podcast me. I'm on everything sports. Yep. And I know nothing. You're going to learn today. Thank you for listening. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.